So what is Publisher Reviews? It is an initiative encouraging peer reviewers to post their reviews alongside preprints. In many cases, we're talking about reviews that have been invited by a journal. However, reviews are written for any reason, whether that is as a result of a journal club discussion or um, reviews that people may write after viewing a preprint could also be shared. Uh, we envision a workflow in which researchers write a review uh, in a fashion that does not include the confidential information, such as the name of the journal, but rather uh, is something that is a bit more uh, independent of the journal that can be posted alongside the preprint, whether that be in the comment section of the preprint server or on a third party review site. And uh, then uh, with this review, uh, this could also be further submitted to the journal with that additional information added. So why are we advocating for this? What is the value in publishing reviews? I think the major and most tangible reason to publish reviews is that it provides readers with additional context on preprints. And it allows uh, the reviewers to point out strengths, weaknesses, and unanswered questions. So I want to draw your attention to this tweet by Vincent Boudreau, who at the time was a graduate student. Uh, and tweeted about a conversation between Helder Maedo and David Pellman on a preprint, which he found to be incredibly useful for providing insight into how experts in the field were thinking about certain problems and where they differed in their interpretation of data. Uh, this is something that um, is often hidden. Uh, while many journals are now beginning to pub publish open peer review reports, uh, seeing it on the preprint is even more dynamic. And it carries additional benefits as well. It enables the reuse of peer reviews uh, that are posted on preprints. A journal can then look at those reviews and especially if they're signed, incorporate them into a peer review process. This is uh, a really valuable feature because um, as calculated um, by uh, American journal experts, there's an estimate of about 15 million hours of, of scholars time, this is for all fields per year, spent on peer review for papers that end up being rejected. If we can reuse these reviews, um, we can create a more efficient peer review system. Another benefit is to bring discussions into the public domain where readers can enrich the conversation with diverse expertise. So as we know, um, the people who are invited to perform peer review aren't necessarily representative of all scholars or the authors that are submitting those manuscripts. Um, this is true in a number of different dimensions. Um, in this particular image, um, you can see that uh, the geographic representation in the editorial boards of aquatic science journals, just one field on, on many, skews towards North America um, and away from uh, countries like, for example, China. Um, and there's also been studies looking at gender balance uh, and certainly early career researchers who are performing a lot of the work in labs are not represented um, in editorial boards in the same way. However, by bringing conversations out into the public domain, um, <clears throat> readers that have diverse expertise can weigh in. And finally, um, another benefit is that it we can surface the work of reviewers to a broader audience, promoting greater recognition for the work of peer reviewing. Uh, this is an important um, uh, way to, I think, incentivize this uh, function that is considered to be really at the backbone of scholarship, but otherwise goes relatively unnoticed. Um, the topic of recognition uh, for peer review is something that has been discussed for many years. Um, and I think it's really telling that in the survey from Sense About Science and Elsevier uh, from a couple of years back, that many of the topics that came out in this question about, oh, you know, what are the things that could be done to improve peer review? Many of them relate to uh, recognition for time spent reviewing, making reports available um, alongside the article, um, accreditation or an, an acknowledgement. So by posting reviews alongside preprints, this provides a way for reviewers to enable um, themselves to be recognized. 
And um, lastly, we can also catalyze a culture of open commenting on preprints. So it, it's really great that uh, preprints facilitate public dialogue on Twitter and private conversations by email. Yet currently, less than one out of 10 of bioarchive preprints have comments in the commenting section in a place where they are highly visible to readers. Uh, yet at the same time, we know that about uh, two thirds, in excess of two thirds of bioarchive preprints go on to be published, um, which suggests that they are undergoing peer review. And there's uh, a lot of material that could potentially be brought to the surface to enrich this public conversation. Um, so you could imagine that uh, by posting peer review, uh, we could increase by a factor of seven or eight the number, at least, uh, the number of reviews uh, that are that are visible on preprints, the number of preprints with comments and discussions. So we recognize that posting reviews on preprints is a new concept, relatively speaking, and that it is not yet um, current practice. And so we recommend, recommend that there are certain things that uh, both the reviewers and authors could consider doing to make this work uh, more efficiently, more seamlessly. For example, um, when you're invited to review, um, consider letting the editor know. Um, one definitely would like, want to write that review in a way uh, that it is collegial and constructive. Don't reveal confidential information um, and really ensure the feedback you provide is relevant to the preprint version of the article, not just the version submitted to the journal. Um, to publish your review, I think that there is a, you know, you have an opportunity to sign the review, although I don't think it's necessary. Um, one could inform the authors, um, although uh, I, I think that there's, there's some automatic uh, processes that might happen at certain preprint surfers with the comment commenting section there. Um, but there's many benefits to publishing reviews on a platform where the authors can respond. Um, and we recommend some text for explaining why you're publishing your reviews. And we also recommend adding a license to your reviews. And I think on the other side of this, um, pre-printing your own articles provides an opportunity for you to participate as, as an author that welcomes uh, this practice. So you can do this by making sure the version that you submit to the journal is identical to the one posted on the preprint server. Um, and also include in that submission a link to the preprint version and a statement inviting the reviewers to publish their reviews. So we're very proud to have uh, dozens of organizations ranging from publishers to funders to other stakeholders in the scholarly communication space supporting the initiative, which um, uh, means that they uh, recognize that reviewers are capable of posting their reviews um, and encourages this practice. We also have a way for individuals to get involved. Uh, we have a pledge on the website, which I uh, would invite all of you to consider signing. Um, it basically reads that when a journal invites me to review an article, I will publish my review alongside the preprint. Um, and you can learn more about this at publishyourreviews.org. Um, so I want to just provide a little bit of an example of a published review and share with you really what this looks like in practice. So James Frazier, who is the vice president of ASAP Bio, um, recommends that everyone in his lab um, uh, not only publishes all of the reviews that they are invited to write, but also that uh, they partake in something he calls cowboy review, which is to review a paper without being solicited to do so by a journal. Uh, so Iris Young, a postdoc in the lab, and James collaborated on a review of this preprint. Um, it turns out that the authors of the preprint responded uh, to the concerns in, in the, or the questions in the review. And not only that, they also provided the review to a journal to which they submitted the paper. So, they, so even though Iris and James were not invited by the journal, um, they are acknowledged uh, by the journal in the publication of this paper as contributors to this review process. So here's an example of a review um, being used and um, really having that life outside of even the value that it provides to readers on the preprint. So I want to thank everyone engaged in this initiative. Um, uh, first, my co-organizer, Ludo Waltman, who you'll be hearing from in a moment. 
um, as well as all of the uh, ambassadors, um, including um, those you see listed here, um, others who have helped, and certainly all the ASAP Bio Fellows. Um, so uh, Bianca, Nicholas, Saeed, and Susanna, who are here today uh, helping out with this event.